Success, that's what every NBA franchise strives for. Play by play, week by week, and season after season, GMs are spending millions to get the right talent both on and off court. All with one simple goal in mind, to win. But despite fair play rules and the league's best efforts, some teams can't help but dominate. A quick glance at the rafters of NBA arenas is all you need to understand that for some organizations, dominance is in their DNA. Since the league was founded in 1947, every generation of basketball has had a king, the unbeatable franchise that sets the tone and won more than anyone else could. This includes some of the greatest teams of all time, from the game changers to the ones that, honestly, ruined it for everyone else. These NBA teams have helped define the game of basketball and made the league what it is today. So let's take a trip through Hoops history and start at the beginning as we take a look at the best NBA teams from each decade. Shortly after the league was founded, a small team playing out of Minnesota quickly established themselves as the most dominant force in the league. Their name? The Minneapolis Lakers. They won five NBA championships between the years of 1949 and 1954, missing out on a ring just once in 1951. The early Laker dominance can be attributed to a number of factors. Firstly, the team had talent. Forward Jim Pollard, who was well known in the league for his ability to touch the top of the backboard and dunk from the foul line, was a reliable point scorer and a nightmare for defenders. Playmaking guard Herm Schaefer developed a reputation as an outstanding passer, feeding balls to his teammates and controlling the tempo of the game at will. And the jewel in the Laker crown? A 6'10", 245-pound giant playing at center called George Mikan. Mikan revolutionized the game, redefining the way organizations played basketball and setting the standard of the dominant big man we still see today. He was a prolific shot blocker and board snatcher, leading the league in rebounds a number of times and could shoot over any defender with his ambidextrous hook shot. With the help of a tactically progressive coach, John Cummings, the Lakers became the team to beat in the 1950s. But despite their early dominance, the organization found themselves in something of a dry spell after 54, failing to make the finals for the next five years until they eventually faced Boston in 59. The Lakers got swept, losing 4-zip to the upstart Celtics, and as the league waved goodbye to the 1950s, so did the Lakers to Minnesota relocating west to sunny California and renaming themselves the Los Angeles Lakers. But more on that later. Meanwhile, back east, a new dynasty had become born in the Boston Celtics. From 1959 to 1969, Boston played in 10 NBA Finals, winning nine and going eight years undefeated. Nobody before or after has been able to match the Celtics' dominance of this time. At the core, head coach Red Auerbach, a mastermind and one of the greatest NBA coaches to ever coach the game. He was responsible for developing a new, faster-paced style of play that emphasized teamwork, aggression, and ball movement, while also insisting that defense wins a game. Led by Auerbach's ideas of unity, selflessness, and defensive-minded play was Celtic legend and the most decorated NBA player of all time, Bill Russell. A defensive powerhouse, Russell excelled at rebounding, shot blocking, and man-to-man -man marking, leading the league in these metrics a number of times. Around him, he had a well-skilled team that excelled under Auerbach's, at the time, progressive style of play. Opponents were often forced into taking tough, low-percentage shots, and misses were easily rebounded by the 6'10 Russell. Russell could then either choose to run the ball himself or pass it to elite distributor Bob Cousy, who could get the ball in the hands of any other Celtic for a quick dunk or layup. And innovation didn't stop there. The 60s Celtics are often credited for introducing the concept of a sixth man, an off-the-bench role player who could adapt to their team's needs when superstars needed to rest without losing control of the game. As a result of this, Celtic dominance was unmatched and their eight-year-long win streak is still the longest concurrent championship run in North American sports history. But nothing lasts forever, and the Celtics' dominance of the 60s would soon give way to a new and highly competitive era of basketball in the 1970s. From 1970 to 1979, eight different teams won the NBA championship, 
And this era is known for being a turning point in the league as more money and resources began to help smaller teams develop into powerful competitors. One of these teams was the New York Knicks, who in 1970 won their first NBA championship and established themselves as the most dominant team of the decade. They made three finals appearances, winning two times and amassing an impressive record of 540 wins to 282 losses. Much of this was thanks to the Knicks' on-court star power. Second round pick Willis Reed was a focal point of the Knicks' success. A strong rebounder, a reliable scorer whose toughness and leadership qualities helped the Knicks to their first championship victory in 1970. Point guard Walt Frazier was another bright spot on the team and is often regarded as the greatest guard of the decade. His speed, ball handling skills, and an ability to quickly read a defense helped the Knicks to back-to-back -back finals appearances in 72 and 73. The brains behind the operation was head coach Red Holzman. Like dominant teams before him, Holzman also stressed discipline and a team-oriented style of play that brought together individually talented players into one cohesive unit. This style allowed New York to do something no other team in the league could put an end to the Celtics' seemingly unstoppable dominance. While Boston still saw some success during the 70s, New York proved to be the bigger draw, as players like Frazier and Reed captivated fans and turned the Knicks organization into prime-time winning basketball. But the competitive craziness that defined the 1970s was about to get checked hard. Having left Minnesota almost two decades before, the Lakers had been biding their time. And with the 1979 draft, LA acquired a young kid from Michigan who was about to usher in a new era for the organization. Enter Magic Johnson. Magic was exactly that, magic. While with the Lakers, he made nine NBA Finals appearances from the years 1980 to 1989, winning five times against some of the greatest NBA teams of all time. Fast-paced, aggressive, and best of all exciting, Magic was the icing on the cake to an already formidable lineup. Future Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had been a Laker since the mid-70s, and the introduction of the young point guard from Michigan gave the veteran center new life. With the help of reliable and impactful role players like James Worthy, Byron Scott, and Michael Cooper, the Lakers achieved massive success through the 1980s, earning themselves the nickname Showtime. The man responsible for Showtime basketball was legendary head coach Pat Riley. He developed a new offensive focused style of basketball that quickly took over the league. Not only did it dazzle fans in the stands, but it left defenders in the dust. His ability to coach a group of highly talented players and turn them into a cohesive unit was the key factor behind the Lakers' success. They were just a complete team. That's all you can really say. They had a genius head coach, two of the most talented NBA players of all time, and a highly capable roster that could pick up the slack when their all-stars needed a break. But Laker dominance wouldn't last forever. As the 90s drew closer, a small, relatively unknown team with no history of success in the NBA was about to take over. Not just the league, but the whole world. It was time for the Chicago Bulls to step into the limelight. Chicago had always been something of a mid-table team. Conference final losses in both 88 and 89 had left the organization unsure of what to do next. They had talent Michael Jordan, who had won the scoring title every year since 86, and the Bulls had recently signed a young Scottie Pippen to the lineup, hoping to give Jordan some assistance on both the offensive and defensive end. But going into the 1990 season, Chicago made a move that would ultimately make the team the most dominant team of the decade. They fired their head coach and brought in an untested Phil Jackson, and suddenly everything clicked. Utilizing the now famous triangle offense, the Bulls began a highly dominant run that would result in six NBA championships with two three-peats and a team that at times appeared bigger than the league itself. Jordan's unstoppable scoring, unmatched mentality, and clutch crunch time performances highlighted what the Bulls were all about. He won six finals MVP awards, five regular season MVP trophies, and numerous scoring titles while in Chicago. 
But the Bulls weren't a one-man band, and Chicago's dominance was thanks to a highly skilled supporting cast. Players like Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman are as iconic in a Bulls jersey as Jordan was. And the likes of Tony Kukoc and Steve Kerr were highly reliable off-the-bench performers that played a key part in Chicago's 90s success. Like many of his predecessors on the list, Jackson emphasized selflessness and a strong defensive hustle to win rings. The Bulls' dominance peaked in 1996 when they officially became the greatest team of all time, going 72-10 and 10 in the regular season, a record that wouldn't be broken for another 20 years. But more on that later. There's no doubt that the 90s belonged to the Chicago Bulls. But with Jackson and Jordan both leaving the organization in 1998, the Bulls' dominance came to a swift end, and the age of Michael Jordan was over. But Jackson decided he wasn't finished yet and took his talents to the West, where he reignited an old dynasty, bringing them to new heights and just in time for the new millennium. Jackson's time with the LA Lakers brought the once dominant organization back into the spotlight. They won six championships that decade, including an early 2000s three-peat that helped cement LA's legacy as one of the greatest teams in NBA history. A young Kobe Bryant starred alongside big man Chicago. Keel O'Neal, the pair quickly established themselves as one of the most dominant duos in league history. With the help of talented players like Derek Fisher, Rick Fox, and Robert Horry, the Lakers were able to secure themselves a three-peat from 2000 to 2002. But the Diesel didn't stay long, and after his departure from the squad in 04, the Lakers entered something of a rough patch and struggled to fill the void left by the seven-foot center. But before the decade was out, the Lakers would emerge on the other side better than ever, securing during back-to-back finals victories in 2009 and 2010. Now led by a more mature Kobe Bryant, this team included familiar faces like Pau Gasol, Lamar Odom, and still in purple and gold, Derek Fisher. But as Kobe got older, Phil Jackson retired and the Lakers lineup that had won so much began to age out. A new generation of hoopers was about to take over just a city away. The 2010s saw basketball change forever as another previously unimpactful team, this time from the Bay Area, brought their unique style of hooping to the league and turned themselves into the most dominant force of the decade. The Golden State Warriors won four NBA championships at a time when the league was incredibly competitive. They made five back-to-back -back finals appearances, losing only once in probably the craziest playoff moment in the history of the NBA. We've covered that in another video if you want to check it out, but back to Golden State. Their small ball-focused lineup saw the increased use of three-pointers, and players like Steph Curry and Klay Thompson would come to shoot more threes than entire NBA franchises have in a calendar year. They had a dynamic offense and a selfless style of play built around their lethal long-range shooters, and for a long time, the league could not respond. Players like Draymond Green anchored the team defensively and brought unmeasurable leadership qualities to the squad. Andre Iguodala and Harrison Barnes were solid sixth men that proved they could be clutch when it mattered most. The Warriors even overtook the Bulls as the most successful team in a regular season, notching 73 wins and 9 losses in an almost most perfect season. This squad depth earned the Warriors the nickname the Death Line for its versatility and their ability to guard larger defenders while only having smaller guys on the court. With the addition of former MVP Kevin Durant in 2016, the Death lineup got even better and they came to dominate the 2010s in a way that no other team could. But all empires must fall, and since the 2020s, the once unstoppable Warriors have struggled to compete in the league now filled with talent. Since 2020, four different teams have won championships, and it's gotten harder than ever to guess who will win next. New upstarts Milwaukee and Denver have each earned their first championship in franchise history, while familiar faces like the Lakers and Warriors have continued to add to their tally. It's honestly anybody's guess who's up next, but the title of most dominant team this decade is still up for grabs. Let's see who gets there first. Oh, and here's the video I mentioned earlier. Check it out.